Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Tanner and this is Gracie May. And today I'm gonna to be walking you through as I install my Google Nest Hub in the wall. I think that's what they call it now. I know they changed it after they released it, so that's kind of strange, but. My daughter has just hit over a year and uh, this is irresistible to her. She cannot even be in this room without coming and getting this thing. So over the weekend, I found a mount that I think is gonna work pretty well. It's gonna allow me to mount it in the wall. And I'm actually gonna put it over there in the wall so we can still use it to control and have voice commands here in the living room, but it's out of reach of little hands. And I'm sure Gracie is gonna do a majority of the work. Huh. So I'm kind of deciding how I want to set this up. Um, where the camera is, is the front door of our house. And I want to put this somewhere accessible to where when you're getting up from the couch or walking in from the other room, you can easily access it. So at first I was kind of thinking this wall, my wife really likes this picture and she likes it being the only thing on that wall though. And really I'm kind of thinking that right here isn't such a bad spot either. This is kind of another option I was thinking is maybe mounting it right here. Um, this would be pretty accessible when you're coming off the couch. I have a voice command station, either a hub or a just a Google Home in a, almost every room. And they're set to the lights in every room. So if I tell this one to turn off the lights, it knows I'm talking about this room and turns off the lights in here. My worry is sometimes if you're halfway in between rooms, it hears you in the wrong room. So I'm kind of taking into account where the other homes are so I'm not accidentally triggering other ones. One of the drawbacks over here is that the doorbell is right on the other side of this wall and these windows are open sometimes. And if these windows are open and this is the home you're trying to come and look out of, people are gonna see you through the windows. You can't have that. I don't always wanna to talk to everyone. So don't think you can just knock on my door and I'm gonna automatically talk to you. I'm thinking I'm gonna put it over here in this wall. Like I said, my wife likes that there's not another thing on this wall, and I don't think it'll mess with anything too bad having it over there. Kind of wanted to show you guys what we got here in this package. This is the in-wall mount. Basically, gonna cut a hole and put this in that hole. And when we do that, we're gonna be able to take this home hub right here. We're gonna be able to set it through here, like so. So when it's on the wall, it'll look like this. And so it's gonna be a very clean look. It's definitely what I picture more of when I think smart home. You can see here underneath, it uh, still exposes the speaker so you have decent sound. And uh, basically your power is now gonna be inside the wall right here. And usually you plug in with the cable that we have over there. But I bought this adapter and this adapter is gonna allow me to plug this in to an ethernet cable that I'm gonna run underneath the house. That way there's no external power that you'll see coming up the wall or anything. And it'll be powered from my network closet on a battery backup with my other network devices. All right, so now I've got my location picked out. I'm gonna go through the tools that I'm gonna use with you. I got a stud finder. I've got my bracket here that I'm actually gonna use as a stencil. I've got a level, I've got a pencil, and I've got a drywall saw. So I'm basically just gonna use this stencil, line it up on here with my level, and then I'm gonna use the pencil to run it around the inside edge here and just make a stencil on the wall so I have a, a place to trace and cut so I can pop this into the wall. I'll do that now. So you can see what this is gonna look like when it's all said and done. I still have to run the wiring through the wall, but this is what we're left with, and I think this is a much cleaner look. All right, for the next part, I am getting down in my crawl space. You can see I have to tear my tool bench a bit apart. I'm gonna run that ethernet cable from where I installed the unit back into my closet so I can power it from there. As you'll notice my uh, spiffy security uniform. This is from an old job of mine, and uh, it's fire retardant and everything. I've kept it for Occasions like this where 
I'm going to be pushing through some spider webs and stuff. I tried to get rid of it a few years ago, but my wife insisted that we keep it a little bit longer. Looks like that's going to pay out today, so woohoo! finally got this going here, but let me show you how this went. After finding out I didn't have the right size bit and having to make do, shut up, don't judge me, I finally got this hole drilled big enough for this. This is my the other end of that kit, and I'm gonna put it up in here, censored to keep this, the YouTube algorithm happy. Nothing to see here, YouTube. Move along. It doesn't look like you have an app named YouTube. If you'd like, I can help you look for it on the App Store. No, I'm good. Um, so I've got that put up in there, and I'll show you what we do on the other side. So here's my Nest Home hub, and this is the PoE adapter that I bought, and I totally spaced on buying an injector, um, but I think I might have a solution. That is my security camera system, and it has PoE ports on the back, so I am going to try to plug into those and see if it gives me enough PoE or enough power to turn this on. So I've got this cable running up from the camera system. Oh, oh yeah. Dude. All right, so I got plugged in in the other room. Plug in here, we got lights. That's a good sign. Oh yeah. Just noticing the buttons are not accessible here on the side without sort of pulling it out of its case a little bit there. It's kind of a bummer that you can't reach back here, but they did make it so that it sort of slots in here. It's got a satisfying little click as it goes in there and holds itself in there nice. So, I mean, they're not completely inaccessible, and you can still give it the voice command to turn the volume up and down, but we'll see if that gets annoying after a while. So I do have this running off of power from borrowed from my camera system at the moment. I might actually leave it like that. And I also set this up so that right now, in, during the day, it's flashing through the photos that I tell it to flash through. So it's just kind of a nice little wall piece, adds to the, the decorations on the wall, in my opinion. But then at night, it's gonna turn into just a black clock, um, so it's easy to see what time it is. But uh, we'll see if it was worth it. It was a lot of work getting it in the wall and running up the wall from the basement, but it was good, it wasn't too bad. I think it's gonna be much safer here and out of the reach of uh, little tiny hands, but we'll definitely see. Like and subscribe, I guess. Yeah, that's... Take it easy, Fergus. Would you take it easy, Fergus?